what's up guys welcome back to field trips panama welcome back to los buzos resort you know the drill we got a brand new group of clients out here a full group of 12 clients we're about to be taken out into the pacific ocean to do some epic kayak fishing for giant fish it's gonna be a good time this group is sweet we got one repeat customer a guy named craig Wu. he came here before got a giant cubero rooster fish all kinds of stuff he's back for some more and we got a buddy of mine that I knew in middle school in Dallas, Texas, ages ago. Haven't seen him since then, but he's been following myself on Facebook and whatnot, and he just showed up, him and his wife, Keith Maipala, super stoked to have him here and show him what this is all about. But we're getting ready to launch now. Got all the kayaks down on the beach. We're getting ready to launch these clients one at a time through the surf. It's nice and calm today. This is gonna be a breeze. The weather's looking prime. Seas are looking flat. It's gonna be a gorgeous day. We'll see what we get into. It's their first day out here, so I don't know. Fishing, usually first day, it's a little tough. There's a lot of a learning curve, but I'm sure we're gonna get into some good fish. So, we'll see what happens. Catch you guys out on the water. Who's ready? Who wants to go? You're basically family. I've known him two decades longer than anyone else in this whole country, so it's all good. Oh. It's gonna be easy today, no swell. Just, just hop in quick, but let's just... Yeah. Hey, wow, spin move. I don't know. Style <laughs> points. You feeling good? You ready? I'm ready, ready. Okay. Whoop! No necesito ayuda, amigo. Soy un profesional. ¿Qué puede pasar? Uy! Sí! ¡Tío! Gracias, amigo! <laughs> Another beautiful day in paradise. On your left hand side, you'll see the bustling metropolis of Cambutal, Panama, known for its fresh produce, trendy cantinas, and its beautiful women. And then if you look to the right, off there in the distance, you'll see those rocks coming out of the water. That is vaca, it's a Spanish word for cow. Legend has it, a ponga full of cows capsized and the cows ended up on the rocks and you can still hear them mooing at night. That's where we're headed, and all the good fishing basically starts right on the other side of Vaca and offshore. Doesn't look that far from here, but it's about a mile. But we're gonna troll lures here in a minute. Not yet, please don't be fishing yet. There's nothing really worth catching right here. But uh, here in a minute, when we kind of turn offshore, we'll tell you guys, you can kind of spread out and start fishing. And uh, we'll troll all the way out there, maybe pick up a few fish on the way, and we'll be there in no time at all. Whenever you guys want, you can start trolling. If anyone has any questions or, uh, doesn't know what they're doing, let me know. What's the threshold between alcoholic and pirate when it comes to drinking rum in the morning? Come over here and if you can't put that put that one away, and you'll want to grab your big one. Maybe put it on the other side so that leash isn't across your chest like that. And then just come over here close and we'll grab that big rod. Yeah, I think it's a Bonita. Yeah, I can come to you a little bit too. Oh. Let me make a correction there. Oh. Uh, I did a catch and a release, red snapper. Oh. Golly, get up here. So we'll get the hook, if you can then take the hook out of there. And you're gonna hand me the hook when I tell you, okay? There he is, what do we got? Yep, a little bonita. Golly. Like this is a small one and they're just strong fish. This is what we saw jumping out of the water. Okay. Got it. So this is a bonita. Yeah. Bonita is the Spanish word for pretty. Even though they're not the prettiest fish out here, but they are pretty. And then just so you know, but we'll do it for you every time, but you're going right through that top jaw, just like that. Okay. Now he's good to go. It's a good amount out. The drag's good, so I'd put it in that rod holder right there. But now with that bait, you have to keep moving. That's the one I was talking about. You got to keep moving. So you don't have to pedal crazy, but let's start going. I'll show you a good kind of like pace. Just kind of cruise around this area. That's okay. That's okay. That's him. If it keeps doing that a bunch, you can do one more tick up on the drag. But I, it's okay to, if he does it like that every once in a while. If it's a fish, Sarah, it's going to be like, Zzz! like you'll know, okay? That's a big bait. So call us as soon as it starts screaming out. And uh, we're going to wait a good like 12, 14 seconds with that thing, okay? I knew something was up. It was like a 
fourth of the way down and just stopped line stopped coming out. I was like, hold up. Something grabbed it on the way down. It's not big. What the? It's a damn shark. <laughs> a shark ate my jig on the way down and there's three sharks following it. Little ones. You son of a... Huh. Shark ate the jig. This jig's brand new too. Uh, oh God. Oh, don't bite this off you mother trucker. Okay, what could go wrong? Oh my God. Exactly sure what kind of shark it is. When they're small like this, it can be really tough to identify them, but it's got sharp teeth. There we go. Not the droids we were looking for. Not sure what kind of shark that is. Maybe a baby dusky shark. I don't know. There's a lot of different species out here. Hit the jig. Not what we're looking for. I need a little fish identification. I got a tiny little fish here. It's, got, it's brown with white spots. It's called a flag cabria. A little excitement. Not what I was hoping for. But got my jig back. Didn't get bit. We're gonna call that a win. It just came up. That's tuna. That's tuna. They're all around, guys. Like, throw the diver or throw your XPS jig and just let it sink a little bit. Not where the tuna were jumping. Oh! I think that's a tuna. Rob, did you just hook up? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I got a tuna too. They're out here, guys. You gotta communicate, Rob. We won't know what's going on unless you tell us. <laughs> <laughs> oh no damn it came off <laughs> yeah bob just keep fighting we see you. they're coming to you right now got bob here hooked up keep the pressure on you're doing perfect these are strong fish sometimes they can take like 30 minutes to get in no <laughs> oh yellowfin tuna there it is let's go look at it is that your first fish in the salt water? Oh, you got that right. Hold on. <laughs> now he's gonna grab the fish. Okay. Just flip him at that point. Okay. It's a nice fish, man. Nice. Look at this, my buddy from high school, Keith Maipal, has got a yellow tuna next to the kayak first morning. Dakota and Charles Breon are there in the panga to help him land it. Fresh sashimi tonight. There's one, there's more. We just told all the clients, get on it, be fishing. They never travel alone. See, it's gonna break your rod though if it, just hurry, cause it's gonna break that rod. See how it's wrapped around the tip? It's gonna break the rod if it takes off real hard. There you go, there you go. That's a nice one, man. Woo-wee! Yelping tuna back. There you go. Great fish, man. Kurt, where are you from again? Cincinnati, Ohio. All the way from Cincinnati, yellowfin tuna on his lap. Not too many yellowfin in Ohio. <laughs> I'm on <wearing> sushi. <laughs> nice work, buddy. <laughs> Got Mandy here hooked up. Here, is that a snapper? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a rock snapper. So if you want to just grab it. Cool. Nicely done. Sweet, nice Jack crew haul for Mitchell here. Put up a fight, right? Oh yeah, Columbus, Georgia. Nice work, man. One of the strongest fighting fish out here, pound for pound. Nicely done. Look at that. It's so big. That's how you need to do it. So 
Perfect job. Yep, yep. I think that's another one. It's on. Oh. I think something might have eaten this one too. Oh no. I'm hooked up something big on the light set up. I can't stop it. Fish on you guys, something on the bait catching setup that's not bait. Something pretty big, I think. It's fighting straight down, but I can't stop it on this setup. We got light line. Light everything, light rod. Might be a jack or vault. Fight kind of looks like a jack or vault. A pretty good one. Could even be a rooster fish though, bluefinch roll, you never know. Man. <laughs> you guys hooked up some good. All light setup. Can't stop it. Just steady pulling that line. It's coming up a little bit now. Man, this thing is relentless, whatever it is. Starting to gain some ground on it though, it's tiring out a little bit. It's coming up higher in the water column. Never know, could always be a rooster fish, kind of a similar type of fight, but I got a feeling it's a jack. Got to be a pretty decent sized jack. I mean, it's a light setup, but this is not a small fish. Oh! Dang! Wow! Still ripping out drag. Been fighting it a while, bro. Still ripping out line. I know, but the line does it. This is at 30. He's kicking my, you know what, man. I got a feeling it's a big jack, but I don't know. <laughs> oh my gosh. What is this? Oh. Here we go. Gaining some ground on it now. Get up here. <sighs> it's coming up. Man, my arm is burning. Oh, I see color. Just a glimpse. It's a jack-like fish. It might be a jack. Goodness gracious. Get up here. Yeah. I think so. Big one. Golly. It's where the blue runners were, man. Grouper one, it's loaded down there, but I think I get that. I bet that's what hit my blue runner on the way up. It wasn't teeth marks, it's just its face got messed up. Yeah. <sighs> uh. Golly, what a battle, you guys. It's a Jack Revolve, one of the strongest fish out here, pound for pound. Not what I was hoping for, but what I had a feeling it was the whole time. But man. It's definitely one. Yeah, yeah. It's a good one, especially on this setup. God, get up here. Big boy Jack. That's a grown up one. Ah. Phew. Golly. 
had to work for that one. Man, alive. So that is a jack of all you guys on a little micro jig, bait catching rig. And that was a blast. What a fight. Lord have mercy. Tiny jig, light line, light setup. Big fish. These things are so strong. Whew. My right arm is burning, dude. It had it in the forehead. Right in the forehead, not in the mouth. <laughs> Little micro jig. Picked these up from Tackle Direct before I came down here. Got it done. Hooks are sharp, it's got me now. There we go. Yeah, jacker ball. Nice one. Send it on his way. Whew. Thanks for the ride, buddy. Hey, so, uh, Robert, uh, we're trying to catch some bait and uh, drop the X wheel down. Hope the giant jacker ball. Uh, that little down, down one of the strongest fighting fish arguably in the world, maybe. That thing wore me out. Goodness gracious. Whew. Super fun, was just trying to catch bait. I had hooked a blue runner right before that. Handed it off to a client here, Ariel, who was actually just here my last trip here. And he's already come back here to Los Buzos. Uh, and that blue runner got hit on the way up. So I knew there were predators around as well, looking at all those blue runners. And I dropped this thing back down, trying to catch another bait for him. Since, that one, red kayak, since yeah. that one got hit and got killed. And uh, sure enough, very next drop, big old Jack of all on my tackle. That was a blast. That was so much fun. But I'm worn out and I got blown off the spot, so I'm gonna head back over there and see if this time we can't hook a bait for one of these clients. Or maybe another big fish. That was fun. All right, got Eli hooked up now. Is that on the little jig? Yeah, nice. Oh, it looks like there's some weight to it. Bigger than my uh, than my six-inch Yeah, well, it it's not fighting like a bonita, but yet it is. Oh no! Oh, nice spotted rose. Yes, sir. That's a nice one. Oh man, that's a nice one. Yeah, she's going for dinner. Yeah, buddy. Yes, sir. Nicely done, bro. Nice spotted rose. Let's get it. Got Ryan hooked up big. He said he's got a Kubera on, most likely. Probably gonna get there by the time it's up, hopefully. Oh yeah, looks like he's got it there. Oh yeah. Heck yeah. I see it! Oh baby! There it is! Let's go! Yeah! <laughs> Look at that! Last minute Kubera! Nice, man. Wow, look how pretty that one is. I saw one twice this size about a half hour ago with three rooster fish. Really? Come they on. came up slowly after my little bonita. Jeez. Is the hook out? No. No, okay. You need help? Uh, I'll take a look at it. Okay. But yeah, just be very careful. Watch those teeth. Hands out. Okay, hold on. Get, some, get, them, get them down in the water for a little bit. Just pedal around with them. I might have to swim this one down. If you pick them up above your head, just head. plunge them down in front of you. There you go. All right, can I try it? Yep. Straight first, there you go. Let's go! <laughs> swim yeah. off! Nice job, Ryan. I can't yell. That was exciting. Hell, oh, butter Charles. All right, guys. So Diego's going to show us how to prepare this snapper. We got this rompe pila rock snapper, Fargo Roquero. I just got shot in the face with one of these scales. That actually did not feel good at all. He said, be careful. I didn't listen. <laughs> oh. Hack 
taking off the spines. You don't want to be eating those. And these guys got gnarly spines on top. The little ones you don't have to worry about it so much, but these big rock snappers. Score this guy. <laughs> In a huevos. Caviar. Caviar. She's got eggs. Diego loves eating the eggs. Vas a cocinarlos? Si, sí, amigo. Si, sí, amigo. So you're going to cook those? He's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he loves eating fish eggs. Basically fry up those things. It's kind of like grits almost, the texture of grits. Maybe we'll try that with Diego. Ah. Damn though, these steaks. Basically cutting this guy into steaks, staking them out. Rock snapper steaks. Coming up. Mm-mm-mm, just like mom used to make. These are tough animals, these rock snappers. Really hard to fillet as well when we fillet them. All right guys, so now we are gonna cook up this rompe paila, this pargo roquero, this rock snapper. I'll be honest guys, this is a fish that doesn't get a lot of love here at Los Buzos. Uh, the owner does not really like cooking it. He doesn't think it's the best fish out here, so we were able to keep this for ourselves for our day off here as guys at Los Buzos. So we got Diego here who you guys saw butchering this thing like he was hacking up a deer. He's gonna make us this rock snapper in like a coconut milk kind of broth. He's gonna walk us through it. I'll translate for you guys as we go. He didn't speak any English, but I got a feeling it's gonna be really good. Diego hasn't steered us wrong yet. I'm feeling pretty confident about this. But we're about to prepare a rock snapper in a coconut milk broth, we'll call it. I don't really know. So to start this broth, we're gonna throw in some coconut, obviously. And we're gonna blend this up with basically just some water, just to make coconut milk. And these coconuts were harvested right here in our front yard. We got coconut trees all over the place, so never in short supply. This is not the coconut milk you buy at the store, y'all. This is the real deal here. Un medio medio. Gonna fill it up about halfway with water. Coconut milk's done, and now he's gonna put it into this wok through a strainer to get all the chunks out. Sazon tropical, kind of a seasonal that we like to use here. A little bit of oregano. A little bit of extra salt. Now the star of the show, these rock snapper steaks going right in there. And you can do this with any fish, especially anything that's got a good bite to it. It's not too soft. Nice durable fish meat. This is gonna be good. And he's putting half the head in there and that's gonna be kind of for flavor. And then later he's gonna make a soup out of that. If you're creeped out by fish eyeballs, you can go ahead and leave that out if you want. And that's pretty much it, you guys. We're gonna let that simmer in this coconut milk seasoned sauce. He's saying about 15, 20 minutes. We're gonna flip it over on the other side. Just make sure the fish is nice and cooked through, but this broth is gonna lend it all the flavor. And simmering it in this sauce is gonna make it a little more tender. So this fish, a little bit tougher than we like, which is why we don't serve it at Los Buzos. Uh, we got pretty high standards here for the clients. We only serve the best fish, and we catch plenty of the best fish. Then we don't have to use these fish uh, for the clients, but for us, I think it's gonna be delicious. I think it's gonna be really good. We're gonna cover that, let it simmer a good 15, 20 minutes. We'll flip it halfway through, and once we think it's cooked through, that's it. Super simple, really. But I think it's gonna be good. All right guys, so here we got the eggs to that rompe paila, that rock snapper, the egg sacks. This is Diego's favorite. 
I'm not as sold, but we're going to try them out today. We got some salt, some pepper, some lime. Super simple. Egg sacs. Any fish you can do this with. It doesn't look that appetizing, but it's pretty good fried according to all the locals. No es muy bonito, amigo. Fail. Ah, okay. So he's going to put some flour on it just to keep them from separating. Kind of hold it all together. Not a lot, just a little bit of, a little bit of flour. Which is good because we only have a little bit of flour. <laughs> Right in some hot oil. Dakota here says there's a few things he likes better than the fish eggs. Not necessarily his go-to move, but we're gonna we're gonna try them out. All right, flipping them now, nice and easy. Don't want to rub through the egg sac, <laughs> apparently. And you guys, some of the stuff I cook for y'all, I'm an expert on. This I am not. Hang on, Milo. I'm telling him I'm gonna try it, but I'm a little scared of this one. You notice he's poking it with a fork to really make sure that oil gets down in there and cooks the whole thing through and through. I don't know about this, you guys. The fish eggs fried. I'm I'm a little skeptical, but what I will tell you is that every single time we cook a fish here at Los Buzos, every time we clean a fish. Diego insists that we give them the eggs, so they can't be that bad, I would think. I would think, I don't know. Fish eggs coming off now. Oof. They don't look bad. Check on this. Oof. Yeah? Mm. I'm super skeptical. Son suave o duro? Muy suave. Muy suave. Tan suave, bro. Too soft, I'm thinking. Moment of truth. Diego's already laughing at me because he knows I'm legit scared. Rock snapper egg sack. You could call it caviar, but that'd be giving it way too much credit. These are snapper eggs, fried, a little bit of flour. Ooh. Amigo. Bueno. bueno. That is not bad at all, actually. It does not taste like anything fish related, but it's salty. It's almost like cornmeal. That's what it reminds me of, cornmeal. Can you zoom in on that? It doesn't look like a million fish eggs. It looks to me more like cornmeal. And that's kind of what it tastes like, kind of gritty, but crunchy, salty. It's pretty dang good. I'm not gonna lie, man. It's actually pretty dang good. I would eat more of that if there was more to be had. I'm not going to lose sleep over the fact that there's not more to be had, but that's pretty dang good. That wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. Got a little weird aftertaste, I'm not going to lie. But not bad. Oh, bueno. Eh, oh, bueno. Oh, bueno. Uh-huh. <coughs> not bad. Alright guys, and this is looking pretty much done. Now, with this, you can let it go longer. It's just going to get more tender as you go. But we just tested it with a spoon and it's looking plenty tender enough. So we're gonna grab this out, get a little taste test. And as you can tell, this coconut milk, this base, this broth has kind of reduced down. It's getting a little thicker. It's got a little different color now. It's, it's taking that color on from the fish. And uh, I already tasted the broth and it is full of flavor. So we're gonna serve this over rice, but for right now, we're just gonna try a piece. Perfecto, amigo. Get a little of that juice. Oh yeah, look at this guys, so you can see, I mean the bone just comes right out, clean as a whistle pretty much. Don't have to worry about the bones with this. We're going to try a piece of this fish. 
Smells amazing. It's hot. <laughs> que rico, amigo. Que bueno. You guys, it's got just a little bit of that coconut flavor, which adds just a little bit of sweetness. Other than that, just a little citrus, salt, pepper, garlic. The meat's actually really tender, which is not normal for this fish. We cooked it long enough in that coconut milk. That is fantastic. It's super juicy, moist, still soft. Golly, that's good. This is a fish that we normally throw back. But we had one that we tried to release and it wouldn't go down, so I said, keep it. The guide's leading on their day off, and man, am I glad we did that. But you can do this with any fish that's a little tougher, a little tougher meat. This is the way to get it tender, add a ton of flavor. It is so flavorful. That is fantastic, you guys. You gotta try this recipe. But that's all we got for you this time. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you learned a little something, got a new idea for the kitchen with your fish. This is so good. We're gonna enjoy this meal, serve it on some rice. Thank you guys. Please like, subscribe, turn on the bell notifications if you feel like it or don't, it's fine. But I'd love to see you back every week. Lots more Field Trips Panama coming up. In the meantime, we're gonna enjoy this. Thank you guys, ciao.